Hello, welcome to AICT Asia PCR TV interview. My name is Dr. Paul Ong. I'm a senior consultant cardiologist. I'm based in Heart Specialist International at Mount Elizabeth Molina Specialist Center. Hi, I'm Dr. Aaron Wong. I'm the head and senior consultant, director of interventional cardiology, National Heart Center, Singapore. Thanks, Aaron. In this session, Aaron and I will share our views on the contribution of polymers and stents and drugs used in stents for high bleeding risk patients and our experiences on the use of the new Bowel Freedom Ultra stents. Aaron, with more trials being conducted and results being released on stents for high bleeding risk patients with one month DAPT, do you think polymer and drug contribute to the suitability of the stent to be used in this particular high risk group of patients? Indeed, there are uh, multiple trials of stents using DAPT of one month. Besides Biosensors and Medtronic, Abbott and Boston has claimed the safety of a one month DAPT. Recently announced uh, Master DAPT, the largest of such trials, also confirmed the safety of one month DAPT for thermal stent. These stents um, include durable, biodegradable, or no polymer. So the absence of biodegradable polymer may not have advantage over durable uh, polymer for short DAPT therapy. Uh, obviously, bioabsorbable and non-polymer uh, are preferred for obvious reasons to leave nothing behind. Um, not all durable polymers are the same. Uh, if you have a durable polymer, then it has to be uh, biocompatible. Unlike previous polymer in older stents, which was shown to induce hypersensitivity and leads to stent thrombosis, current clinically available stents are safer whatever polymers used. Drugs may not be clinically important as these stents in the DABT, short DABT trials consist of different kinds of limous drugs. The concentration of the drugs on the stent, however, may be more important so as not to cause vessel toxicity. Indeed, thanks, Aaron. Well, we, we need have multiple trials involving durable polymer, bioresorbable polymer, and stents without polymer, which showed similar benefits. But this is a point where I slightly uh, uh, disagree with you. Um, I think the lipophilic properties of biolimus may provide extra benefits in the treatment of coronary artery, especially those arteries with you know, heavy lipid, uh, lipid laden plaques. We have seen the superiority of our matrix in the leaders trial and its benefit in comfortable AMI trial. I think the Bar Freedom Ultra with the thinner copper chromium struts and better expansion limits should further enhance the efficacy and safety of the Bar Freedom stents. Now, we all know that the recent Onyx two year results have came out and surprised quite a lot of us, it showed that the all cost mortality of the resolute Onyx 2 uh, of the Oxford Onyx is higher than the Bar Freedom Stainless Steel Stent. Aaron, what's your view on this? Yes, the all-cause uh, mortality was indeed significantly increased in the Onyx group at two years follow-up, and it is of concern. However, uh, the rate of MI and cardiac uh, mortality were not increased in the Onyx group. Therefore, it is uh, very difficult to explain uh, the mechanism of the increase in all-cause uh, mortality except probably for a play of chance. Also, there have never been a trial comparing of stents that have shown a mortality benefit. I agree with you. This is an interesting, uh, but also important finding. Of course, it can be, as you said, a play of chance, but as all-cause mortality was a pre-specified secondary endpoint in your trial, it is at least important to note about it. And it also highlighted the safety benefit of the study called about freedom stainless steel stent in this particular group of patients. Now, Aaron, you are credited as the first Bar freedom ultra uh, user in Asia. Now, can you share with us your first experience in using uh, this new stent in your clinical practice? Uh, yes, I'm honored to be the first um, ultra user in the Asia Pacific region. Uh, it was um, a webinar organized by ABSC uh, on, on the bifurcation techniques with live case uh, where I was the um, operator. It was a, a case of 70 year old gentleman with essential thrombocytosis on treatment. 
um, there was actually no increase in bleeding risk, but the patient wasn't keen to be on long-term DAPT. Um, he had double bifurcation lesions, LAD and D1, and left main lesions. I treated the uh, LAD diagonal bifurcation with DK culotte and left main bifurcation with crush technique. BioFreedom Ultra performed well with both techniques, and the cobalt chromium material um, increases the radial opacity, facilitate the crossing of stent struts at uh, optimal position, and also easy to check for any deformity of stents. It was, uh, the patient was well when uh, uh, he was reviewed at nine months. Paul, what about you? What is your experience with uh, BioFreedom Ultra? Well, you know, Aaron, I will have to both, you know, benefit by actually watching you doing this case live and I'm really impressed with it. Well, my case is not as complex, um, but it does highlight the use of BioFreedom Ultra in some difficult cases. Uh, particularly in a patient with complex uh, comorbidity. I have a lady in her mid-60s with angina and positive stress tests. Her CD coronary angiogram already demonstrated two vessel disease in both LAD and RCA. Unfortunately, she's allergic to a lot of medication, including aspirin. She's also taking long-term clarithromycin for her bronchiectasis for prophylactic reasons. So prior to performing the angiogram and angioplasty, she underwent an attempt to desensitize her from aspirin, but that was not successful. And she developed further angioedema during that process. So I actually performed uh, angioplasty on her, putting her on the single antiplatelet ticagalol and underwent IVUS guided PCI to both vessels, implanting bowel freedom ultra stents with very good angiographic effect. So I'm aware of the interaction between the ticagalol and clarithromycin, and that she uh, have to seek input from the infectious disease expert to adjust the antibiotic dose and also change the, the uh, regime as well. I put on a single antiplatelet uh, agent of ticagalog only. And my plan is to keep the ticagalog as short as possible and switch her back to her usual clopidogrel after one to two months, uh, which has been taking long term. Now, the, this complex medication issues and those adjustments is so much easier because the choice of our freedom and use of our freedom provided the, uh, the freedom for me to switch antiplatelet regime and antibiotics choice back to the pre-PCI stable state after a month. So Aaron, this is a really useful and, and uh, interesting discussion. You know, we talked about um, the uh, newer uh, generation of bowel freedom uh, stent, in this case, the bowel freedom ultra stent, and the use in some really complex patient. Your case involving two very complex bifurcation. My situation, in my patients, I use it in patient, uh, a lady with really rather difficult uh, clinical background. The Barlinus PA9 polymer free stent as one of the largest database sets of any stents when you come to treating the HPR patients. The leaders free trial, the leaders free two, the leaders free three, and the competitor sponsored Onyx One trials all send up one very consistent message that the bar freedom stent is indeed one of the safest and most effective stents when used to treat high bleeding risk patients. The previous concern that the stainless steel platform uh, has been nicely addressed by the improved cobalt chromium based Power Freedom Ultra platform. It is now much more user friendly, both in terms of deliverability and stand extension limits. Aaron, can you share your final thoughts on the Power Freedom Ultra stand with us? So, Paul, indeed, yeah, the uh, newer version of uh, improved version of Power Freedom Ultra uh, indeed is a better uh, deliverable stand. Um, there was criticism um, of the previous BioFreedom uh, stand where the sand struts are uh, thick, uh, uh, thicker and uh, there is problem with delivery and the, um, uh, the procedure success rate wasn't as good as the Onyx stand. But with the newer version of BioFreedom Ultra, there is thinner struts and uh, better radio opacity and um, it, um, uh, it sure would improve the uh, procedure success rate. And um, uh, BioFreedom is the um, should be the standard to compare with, as this is the their leader in uh, in 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 uh, uh, using uh, stents in high bleeding risk patient with shoulder DABT. With that, I want to close the sessions. I'd like to thank Aaron uh, for helping uh, and generating so much discussions, and I wish you all to continue to enjoy the AICT Asia PCR twenty twenty one.